Alrighty, so I know you guys have probably thought that this project has been just dead and just I'd given up on it. But truth is that a lot of what was this is being used for was for roller hockey and just stuff in general. But with the pandemic going on and just other stuff, I have not actually played roller hockey since the last video came out. But I eventually got around to doing a final testing here with actual ice hockey to compare the GoPro and my DIY Raspberry Pi camera. And ignoring me getting scored on here, this was kind of my last ditch, or not really last ditch, but if the GoPro couldn't be kind of comparable to my Raspberry Pi I was DIYing here, then I was going to basically consider this project as dead, as just there was no need for me to continue on with this. But, if you guys haven't been able to guess, the left extra side is actually the GoPro, the right side is the DIY Raspberry Pi camera, and to be honest, it's not too bad at all. I'm actually pretty happy with how this is looking in this comparison that is going on right now. Obviously, there is a difference between the right and left side. Mainly, there's a bit of color difference. Um, I will say the biggest difference is actually the post-processing that the GoPro does. Um, the movement is much more crisp on the left. There is much more motion blur on the right with our camera. But again, I'm not doing anything kind of beyond just capturing video there. Um, not sure I can really do much more besides that, but I'm actually kind of pretty happy with how this has been going so far. Now also ignore the weird cropping on the right side. That's just me trying to match up the left and the right sides to be sort of together in how they look. But if we take a still of both the GoPro and the Raspberry Pi camera where they both show the same things, you will notice that there is definitely a lot less motion blur on the GoPro than ours. Now. I am not a whiz with FFmpeg, I'm not a whiz with kind of video editing in this sense of like live video recording and kind of processing it that way. I by no means know a lot about that, I know very little about that, but I will give my sense of what I'm seeing here and the biggest difference I'm seeing is just the crispness, especially when it comes to motion. The GoPro does a far better job than my Raspberry Pi camera does here and this is probably the biggest thing that is really kind of I'm, I'm unhappy about. Um, when it comes to recording, you really, I, you really kind of want to see that crispness. You don't really want this blur that you're seeing. However, when it comes to broadcasting, which is another half of this project, is being able to stream this live to like Twitch or something like that, I am actually pretty okay with this. This is definitely, I would say, good enough quality to stream to a live because you're not really as interested in the crispness and being able to kind of manipulate it that way. You're just sending it to a live stream. So. That's just my kind of two cents of what I'm seeing for right now, but I'll just dive a little bit more into kind of what I've been doing with this project, where I'm at, and what my next steps are before hopefully I can get to like a first released version of this project. So in terms of the actual Raspberry Pi camera I've been using, this is the actual physical setup I had when I was recording that game. Um, as you can see, it was just a regular like suction cup, uh, glass mounts, um, the battery bank for the Raspberry Pis in the back, the GoPro here is on top, and then my Raspberry Pi camera here is in the middle. Um, I also had a microphone USB dongle just to test out. It, it, it did not work. Um, let's go with that. I'm still, I'm still investigating how I want to do audio. One of the other things I was going to do is what I originally tried to do, which was to have a USB um, audio dongle that just had a three millimeter jack on it to solder that onto the USB um, breakout pads on the PCB of the Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, but I think I actually reverse the positive and negative on it and I killed it. Uh, either way, I killed it, so this was kind of a backup plan. Uh, cheap USB dongle, it, it didn't work. So I'm still investigating how I want to do audio, but in terms of how this is done so far, this is it. I mean, the housing I'm hoping to kind of adjust. Um, it's big, but there's a lot of empty space. Again, the whole bottom of it is sort of empty. Um, that would be to play around if I wanted to add an internal battery, you can put it there. Um, if I wanted to, I have, obviously I have that USB sound card, I can put that in the bottom. There is a bunch of kind of free space. It's not this thick. Um, it's again, it's a lot of it is the camera, the height of the camera, and then the Raspberry Pi Zero in there. So space wise, I don't know. I'm still working a full design I want. I have a 3D printer which is off to the side here. I don't think you guys can see it. Um, so hopefully now when I wanted to change designs or redo stuff up, um, I can do this more quickly to adjust it. But uh, in terms of other stuff, there's the button on here on the side. This is what starts and stops it. Um, you can also hold a press and that will change it between Wi-Fi and um, 
AP mode or a, a host node, if that makes sense. Um, so you can either connect to a Wi-Fi network around you, or it can be become a host for Wi-Fi for you to then connect it. That was actually finally done. That's one of the things I have done since then. I have finally got that working. I found a script that will allow me to change between it being a client and a, a, a server host. I'm forgetting what the actual term is, but I've gotten that. So now when you connect to it, there's an actual web page you can visit. You can take a snapshot to see the actual physical view the camera has. I'm working on getting to be able to stream from this to your phone or wherever you're connected to. Um, there's some other settings on there you can change, but that's kind of the main way you're interfacing with it is going to be through that. Um, so that's sort of the, uh, the scope of what I've sort of done since then. So in terms of what I still need to do, one of the things I need to do is I need to figure out the audio. The audio is probably the one thing I haven't been able to nail down. I haven't been able to kind of complete or get in the, the way I want it to be. Obviously I tried this, the audio quality when I could hear it on like a live stream was not very good. Um, and then with the recording wise, I don't know if I messed up how FMPEG records audio or whatnot, but it got all condensed down um, into like a short time and didn't, it just didn't work out. So audio is one thing I still need to work, work into, figure out what the cheapest, but also most accurate and just best I can do for this. Cause again, I'm not trying to be spending a lot of money on this. It's meant to be a cheap alternative, but you can't just use a $3 white USB dongle. It just, it doesn't, it's not the same. So audio is one of the, one of the biggest things you need to work on. Um, in terms of performance, I, it's not too bad. I mean, um, I can't really do any post-processing with FFmpeg. Um, basically recording the video that comes from um, Raspy Vid, taking that, sending it to a disc, um, adding the audio into that. We're at about 70% CPU usage, so not bad, but that's basically we hit the limits. Um, this is at 1080p. I, I need to play around with the bit rate. The bit rate's one thing I do need to kind of um, figure out what the most optimal bit rate is. That's one of the things I going forward also need to work on. But in terms of the Raspberry Pi, it seems to be handling this pretty quick, uh, pretty well. I tried to do um, adding uh, text post-processing. That was a no-go. Um, you can add text via RaspBeVid. Um, so that's one thing that you, you could do is you could do it there. Um, obviously, I don't think you can change it while it's live, but um, so in terms of what you can do with FMBeg, it's very limited. It's just basically take what it is, record it, or in my case, live stream it to Twitch or whatnot. Um, that's the kind of the scope of what I have, but yeah, so going for the next video. So hopefully for version one, the biggest thing I need to do is I need to figure out the case, the audio, and then maybe play around with some FMBeg settings, but that's really all I have that I feel like I can change or feel like I can do better for before I get to a first release, kind of a V1 um, of this DLI Raspberry Pi cam. So if you have anything that you can think of that might be a little beneficial to me, um, all the source code for this is all up on GitHub. I try to keep this updated. Um, if you have any ideas, suggestions on how I could improve this, please let me know. Again, I'm not an expert in really any of this field. I know enough to be able to do this but I am far from an expert, especially with FMMBeg. That is a black box that, I don't know. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully it won't be the however many months it was between videos as it was last time. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.